Good morning, YouTube. This is Ghost Pose One. Today is September 18th, and it's a perfect time to start thinking about undercoating your vehicles, or anything for that matter, that you want to try to keep uh, rust away from. I've come up with a few ideas. Now, I'll be spraying most of this today, um, but what I really like to do is to brush whatever I can on because I find that brushing any of these mixtures, um, brushing it works a lot better because you can get in, you can work the material in to the uh, pitted metal is, uh, much better than if you just sp sprayed it on. So I like to use the fluid film, and this is a gallon can, uh, and I just have an old disposable brush. And uh, I'll show you where I use this uh, at some point. But basically, if you can get at it certain areas, I always find that brushing always uh, works better just for me because, like I said, you can work it in a lot easier than the spray, which kind of sits on the surface. Now, something I'm adding this year, which I've added it before. I shouldn't say I just, I'm not adding it this year, but I'm spraying it this year. In the past, I have uh, used these toilet bowl rings. These are like the stickiest wax ever, okay? And a buddy of mine gave me an old crock pot. And um, what I do is I put it in a metal container and I'm melting it currently. And you can see uh, it's still a work in progress. It takes a little bit of a, some time to get. These are a couple of wax rings in here. But the, the beauty of this stuff is that whereas the oil will work into the cracks and crevices, the wax kind of seals everything in. And if you get a warm summer day, the wax will actually start to melt a little bit. And again, it'll start to creep, which is kind of what you want. You want to have a kind of a coating on here, uh, which would seal all the um, uh, salt and brine out so that it can't corrode the metal, obviously. And it's the, the wax is sort of very similar to what the... Uh, they used to use back in the 70s on the good Z-Bart, the Z-Bart that you would spray on there and you couldn't penetrate that because it had a waxy um, material in it that would prevent anything from breaking through. Now the reason why I'm saying September 15th is a good time is because if you wait much longer, the overnight lows right now are about 50 degrees in that, uh, in that area. Um, if you try to spray or brush. I think it's more even if you brush it uh, onto a frame that is been sitting overnight in a 50 degree, 40 degree uh, uh, temperature area. That as soon as you put the wax on there, it's going to solidify, and you won't be able to work in it at all. You'll have to use a hair dryer or a heat gun or something. Um, but um, so if you spray it when it's warmer out it'll still say still say liquid and it'll be able to creep and then it'll slowly solidify but if you put it on a cold metal which I did this years ago I brushed on a compound that I had wax in it and as soon as it hit the frame it turned into a, a wax candle it, I mean it, it, it went on but you had to keep continually going back to the crock pot to heat up the bowl so that's why I'm saying it's a good time of year now to do it because if you wait in especially if the extreme northern parts of the country if you wait too long uh, it's going to be a pain to work with the wax the oils you won't run into a problem necessarily but you still like to have that ability for the uh, oil to creep into the pores of the metal and if it's if everything is warm out the, the frame included they'll be able to uh, creep better than if it was a cold, a cold day so that's why I say that Specifically, I like to use oil. Uh, these are very inexpensive oils that I bought off of Amazon. Everything that you uh, uh, see today was purchased at Amazon. I don't have links, but I think if you just type in the, uh, the uh, titles, you can find them easy enough. They're pretty basic things. This is just a regular 10W30 oil. I think it was $15. Uh, this is, I use the uh, conventional oil really more for sort of a color um, because some of the other items that I used um, are more of a 
pink color, specifically the next one, which is automatic transmission fluid. Automatic transmission fluid has the ability to creep real well. Creep meaning that it'll, over time, it'll work its way into little cracks and crevices. Um, and uh, that makes it one of the best lubricants you can use for undercoating. If you use nothing else other than automatic transmission fluid, I think you'd be in really good shape. The third thing I use is bar and chain oil. Now the bar and chain oil is extremely sticky. I don't think it really matters whether you buy a summer blend or a winter blend. I think the uh, summer blend tends to be a little more sticky, but I've used both and they sort of, um, I don't see much of a difference. Now you may say it's a bit of overkill to use all of these. Uh, I, th I think between the three of these, it may have cost $45. Okay, the idea is that we're going to measure out, and I say measure out, roughly measure out a third of each of these. Uh, actually, a fourth if you add the wax. And um, so, you don't, if you don't have to buy all three of these, if I was to pick one, believe it or not, I think I would actually pick the uh, bar and chain oil because I find the bar and chain oil sticks to everything. If, uh, and uh, that's kind of what you want. You don't want it to wash away. These will all penetrate, but I find that the bar and chain will actually stay on. It may, over time, it'll, the dust will stick to it a little bit better. And so that's kind of what my thinking is as far as if you had to choose one of them, I would go with the bar and chain. But because I like the properties of each one of them, I like the creeping ability, I like sort of the color uh, the, uh, that this provides which you know it's going to be amber these are both amber you don't even really need to use the motor oil but i just like to, i'm going to try it that way uh, i've used these two together with pretty well pretty good success and then of course you're going to add the wax so that's the thinking there also rubber gloves are a must just by touching these things i've got oil on my hand from prior use so any kind of rubber glove you can put on uh, that would help big time and also uh, I have a fa uh, fan here that's just running it's good to have a fan sort of blowing under the car at the time you just don't want to be downwind of it obviously but it's a good way to get the uh, any of the uh, molecules that are in the air out of your out of your face and away from you you can wear a respirator too I tend not to but uh, obviously if you have an allergic reaction to any of this stuff or uh, it would be a great idea in addition, I'm going to use, this is just a typical undercoating gun. I think I paid $15 on Amazon. These are readily available. You don't, want to, you don't need to get anything expensive because all this is doing is it's just uh, providing a, a, some air pressure to, to propel your liquid onto your frame. This was, an, I believe, this is also on Amazon. This is the container that everything will get mixed into. This was, I believe this is under the brand of Eastwood and it screws onto the gun and the idea here is again we're going to measure out roughly a fourth of each of those compounds into this one container also i'm going to be using this uh, plastic wand this screws into the end of the uh, of the uh, undercoating gun it's made by 3m also on ebay or Amazon. I think I blow it on Amazon. Uh, it's uh, it's a little bit pricey. It's good for getting into the uh, tight areas. It's got an adjustable sort of a floating head on it where you can uh, uh, spray in different angles. It's good for frame rails, etc. Now to be perfectly honest, this is the vehicle that I'm going to be uh, demonstrating on. This is 1997 uh, Chevy Astro, all-wheel drive. It's a, uh, 1997 is pretty old <laughs> and uh, I have only I only did it I did it a couple of uh, months ago I just sprayed some oil and stuff under there but I had only did the wax part in the back and uh, let me show you that now this frames a little bit uh, scaly and what they basically tell you to do is to uh, scrape the loose stuff off the oil and wax will absorb into the uh, uh, rust and uh, I don't know if you can see this but it's very sticky it's a combination of the bar and chain oil and 
the wax and uh, so that's on there you know and it hasn't really been cold enough for it to uh, to uh, solidify but if you if you rub your fingers over you can definitely feel the wax in there that's where I and there's a good coating on there I'm sure my mechanic will be pissed off but uh, uh, this frame has seen a lot of Northeast winters and uh, you know I think it's time might be numbered but figured to try to give it a little bit more time because it runs really good it's only got 105,000 miles on it also what you want to do is you want to get the uh, you want to pop these rubber uh, plugs off uh, that was you can see there's quite a few of them and this is right around the rocker panel this van never had it done uh, this is like the first time I'm doing them. In fact, uh, what you see right here is a uh, is the running board. I got to take that off and do some repairs on the body. But for demonstration purposes, I just wanted to show you. Uh, you can see how it's all oily, but it's very scaly the frame, and I've had it repaired a couple times already. So, like I said, it's time might be numbered, but or it's <laughs> days may be numbered, but uh, uh, you know you just try to do the best you can. You know, they don't make vehicles like this anymore. Maybe that's a good thing, but uh, this all-wheel drive van is like a tank. And the, uh, so, so you pop those off and you would stick the hose in there and you would spray either way, you know, try to get as much coating in there as possible. And that would sit on the rocker panel and prevent any further uh, uh, rust. And you can see there's a couple up here. There's one up there in the back. You can't really see it with this limited lighting, but there is one here and further down the line this van was my father's uh, he bought it uh, it was the last uh, van he bought um, he was uh, we come up from a family of contractors and you were able to get four by eight sheets of plywood in the back of the van uh, which was at that time not very common so it's kind of a tribute to him to keep this van going now this is the 97 ram that i had done over uh, I'll probably do some kind of a third year review on this. I think it was three years now since I painted it. Still no problems with it, but I wanted to show you underneath it. Now I rust proofed under here last year uh, with just basically bar and chain oil uh, and maybe a little bit of engine oil, but not much more than that. And you can see that it's still, it's in good shape. It's got some surface rust. The problem with just using the straight oil is that you're guaranteed that you're going to have to you're gonna have to hit it again every year basically because uh, any water or splashing is gonna is going to uh, wash it all off and that's where the wax comes in if you can get a good coating of wax uh, you could probably only have to do it uh, you know every couple, a couple three years maybe but uh, this is really not bad again it's just surface rust but uh, I just wanted to show you how it does make a difference. This is a, this is a 97 as well, and this has lived its life in the Northeast. So, by and large, it's in really good shape. But, uh, yeah, so I'll give you a quick demonstration on the van. It's been my experience that you want to turn your compressor down to about 60 pounds per square inch at the, uh, at the output. Uh, any higher than that, it just... It, it really just atomizes everything and makes a mess. So I turned it down to 60. Okay, so I've already put the uh, bar and chain in to the container. Now I'm just going to pour, you know, a random amount because I know I'm going to end up using it, so it doesn't really matter how much you put in there. And try to put equal amount of automatic transmission fluid. And the tricky part is going to be getting the wax out. But let me put this in and I'll be right back. Okay, now we'll put the wax in. Now just be careful handling this, especially if you're doing it the way I, I did it with the crock pot. It's very, very hot, especially in a metal pan. As you can tell, when I took the cover off, it was smoking. That's how hot it was. But it's all liquefied now, as you can tell. Okay, so then we'll give it a give it a quick stir. 
Now, I was going to do it under the van, but the van seems like it's got a lot more issues than just uh, rust. So that's going to be a project of mine. I'm going to go under the truck and, and give you a quick uh, demonstration of how this stuff goes on. Okay? I'll be right back. Okay, so we're under here now. This is a messy job, so just be prepared, that's all. Now you can see how it runs down, but it kind of coagulates because of the wax that's in it and the pinkness is of the uh, is the transmission fluid, obviously. So, let's see if I can see if you can see any more of this. See, it comes real out really liquidy, and. Uh, covers really good I'm just kind of doing it it's tough to hold this thing and shoot at the same time but uh, you know you really don't have to be afraid you, you know I wouldn't get it on the rubber stuff obviously they tell you that because of uh, uh, it might dissolve the rubber so let me just finish this up and I'll come right back okay well I, I did a, I did probably a good third of the truck with that one bottle and you can see it's, I got it, got it on everything, you know. Uh, uh, and that stuff will just run and as it, and it'll penetrate into the metal. The bumpers are always a, st a spot where you want to get it in there too. You can't really see it in there with this lighting of mine, but you can see where I got it. So I got about a third of the truck done with just that one bottle. Now you got to expect a little bit of runoff, you know, put it in an area where you're not going to, you don't want to kill your grass, but maybe put cardboard under your vehicle and stuff and let it uh, drip for a while. But, uh, and don't get it on your exhaust. But I think uh, you'll have a lot of success with this. It's really not dripping. I'm sitting right underneath it, and usually I get dripped on it, but I think the wax is kind of keeping everything together. So give it a try. What do you got to lose, right? <laughs> so we'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much.